Good morning. And a happy Easter to you all. Just one or two announcements before we begin. Uh, there is tea and coffee after church if you'd like to stay with us um, and join in fellowship one with another, that'd be great. And if you're quick, there might be a little Easter egg. But only if you're quick. <laughs> There's a limited supply. Well, there, there looks to be about 20 or 30 in there. Well, I, don't, I don't know if that's, that's right. But, so, one minute. <laughs> yeah, we should be all right. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder that we have open church on Tuesday afternoon uh, between 2 and 4 o'clock. So again, more tea and cake, if you so wish. Um, I guess some people are still on holiday from work, I don't know. Um, but uh, you'd be most welcome to join us between 2 and 4 on Tuesday afternoon here in church. We'd like a slice of delicious cake and a wonderful cup of tea. Uh, we have our midweek communion on Wednesday at 10.45 here in church again. And then just um, a reminder, uh, a date to put in your diaries. On the 1st of May, uh, we have um, uh, yet more tea and cake in church, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, but also, we've, uh, we've got an open garden in the village. Um, and it's, it's one of the houses down by the river. If you go down the drive opposite, um, and then one of the houses at the end there, um, um, Lisa there has opened her, her garden for us, um, so you can have a look, a nose, I mean look around. Um, and uh, the tickets for that will be on sale here in church. So you need to come to church first, uh, and then you can make your way up to the garden to have a look around. We'll be serving tea and cake, as I say, here in church. So you might want to have a cup of tea and a piece of cake before you go, and then when you've walked around the garden, you want to come back and have another cup of tea. And uh, so Lisa has quite kindly opened her house, uh, garden, sorry, her house, a garden for us to look around. And it, I can even have a look around, you know, make my inspection as I have to do, you know. Um, and it's wonderful. So uh, please do come along and join us. That's Sunday the 1st of May between 2 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it'll be a, a lovely day, I'm sure. I shall pray hard, as I hope you will, for a nice sunny day uh, and enjoy Lisa's garden. So that's, that's, oh, that's two weeks today. Goodness me. Wow, how time flies. <coughs> we're on karaoke today. Um, so we're going to sing our first hymn, 267. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia, 267 in the Green Hymn.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now I have two wonderful things to do for the next part of our service. The first of those is to publish some bands of marriage. Publish the bands of marriage between Filippo Charles Hugh Plum and Abba Louise Coons, both of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why this couple should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. This is for the second time of asking. All good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray for Filippo and Abba in their wedding preparations. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of love. That gift expressed most wonderfully on this Easter day as Jesus has been risen from the dead and lives with us now. So we thank you for the love that has been found between Filippo and Amber. We pray for them in their wedding preparations that they may know your presence in all things, both in their preparations, on their wedding day, and in their marriage that lies ahead. So bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so I had two wonderful things to do, and the second one is to bless our Easter garden. If you haven't seen it there, please do go and have a look afterwards if you want to. Want to. But I'm going to move up to there now to bless it. <laughs> <laughs> Now turn to our service pulpit. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret side hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts and minds, that we may be perfectly revealed and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please would you sit. Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. 
love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil, and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. So we make our confession together as we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through ignorance, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the of life, to the glory of your Lord. Amen. Amen. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand once again as we join together in saying the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. We alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So as we stand, we pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. Please sit as we hear our first two readings. Sins 
second reading is from Isaiah 65, 17 to 25. I am about to create new heavens and new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the crying of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. Or one who dies at a hundred years will be considered as a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered cursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build, another inhabit, they shall not plant, and another eat. For like the days of the tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labour in vain, or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be speak to God. God. And to sing the gradual hymn 272, Jesus lives thy terrors now, and no more, O death, but for us. 272. <laughs>
speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It sounds like we've got a woodpecker on the roof, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sound system that's playing up. Little one. Sometimes, no matter how many times we are told something, we still don't believe it. You know, we can, we can hear it from someone and we can hear it from somebody else and somehow our brain has a bit of a mental block and we can't sort of, it won't sink in, it's, you know, no, it, it can't be true, it can't be true, whatever they might be telling us. We can be told over and over and over again, but somehow we still can't believe what we're being told. Does that sound familiar in our gospel stories? How many times do we hear Jesus tell the disciples, well, I'm going to be handed over to the authorities, I'm going to die, and then on the third day I'm going to rise again. Jesus tells them time after time, but somehow it just didn't sink in. And Jesus on occasion, he must have thought, well, I'll tell him a slightly different way to see if that makes any difference. And still the disciples and all those on the fringes didn't really understand what Jesus was telling them. Let's think about what we heard today in our Gospel story from Luke. First of all, the women went to the tomb. They were expecting to find Jesus' body that lay there in the tomb. They were they'd taken their spices to embalm the body, all those things that they had prepared. And yet when they got to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. How could that be? Would somebody want to steal Jesus' body? As somebody entered in over the day or so that, since he died on the cross and done something to his body? Of course, the, the women were trying to do their best. They, they prepared those spices especially for the burial of Jesus. And now when they got to the tomb, he wasn't there. His body had gone. 
And of course, then they're confronted by those two men in, in their dazzling clothes. Makes you wonder what their dazzling clothes were like, doesn't it? And still, the women couldn't believe. They couldn't believe what had happened. Jesus' body not no longer there. And the men said to them, He has risen. He has risen. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? They went to the tomb, expecting to find the dead body of Jesus, but it wasn't there. And those two men, angels, or call them what you will, said, Don't look for the living among the dead. Jesus has risen. So what did the women do? Well, of course, they went back to the other disciples. What do you expect them to do? They went back to tell the disciples all that they had seen and all that they had heard. They had seen the clothes that Jesus had put on. They were lying there in the tomb, but no Jesus' body. They had been confronted by those two men in their dazzling clothes, and they'd heard what they'd said. And so off they went back to the other disciples and all the others and said, look, this is what's happened. This is what we have seen and heard. And of course, the disciples sitting there in that room said, well, it's just an idle tale. What are they on about? What are they talking about? So what about Peter? Peter. Well, he, he was having none of it. I mean, Peter was off like a shot. He heard what the women said, well, I'm going to find out for myself. He knew him second. He went, run off to the tomb. He needed to find out quickly what, what was going on. And so he ran very fast. You can imagine him running to the tomb. And his heart beating faster and faster. And with not just the exertion, because he hadn't been he hadn't run the great bath and run around the village. But the excitement, what, what, what was happening? What was going on? He was so excited inside of him. And then suddenly, it came to them. Hold on a minute. What was Jesus telling us? Something about dying and rising again? And all those predictions that Jesus had made are now coming true. All the things that he'd said, it was beginning to sort of click in their brains. Hold on a minute. Yeah, he did say something about this. And now it's happened. It's happened. We saw him die on the cross. And now we're being told he has risen. I wonder what, what we on this Easter day, what sense we make of all of that. This story or, the, or whatever gospel you read, of the story of Jesus' resurrection. What sense do we make of it? How, how do we compute it in our brains as we might say today? He's not here. He has risen. I would hope that we, we question within ourselves what we really believe. What is our trust? What is our belief in Jesus Christ? How do we explain it to others? There's a little one for you, a question on this morning. How do we sp explain the resurrection to others? <coughs> it's all about what we believe. What we believe. It's, it's okay for the first disciples because they were there, they witnessed him. What about us? Here in 2022, what does it mean to us? And how do we tell <coughs> others about our faith? We, we did a Lent course, the season of Lent leading up to Easter, we did a Lent course. And we listened to various people speaking on, on, a, on, a, on an audio. One of them said, one of the speakers said, that trusting in Jesus is like starting a big adventure big adventure. And what happens when you go on an adventure? You, you come across surprises, even perhaps just, you know, just to walk up a few hills or something. And you get to a point and suddenly there in front of you is a, is a wonderful scene, a panorama of beauty of mountains or trees or flowers, whatever it might be. 
And you weren't expecting it. But there suddenly, as, as you walk along, there it is in front of you. I don't know if you watch any of those um, reality programs. Hands up if you watch a reality program. Yeah, I'm one or two of you. And you get those celebrities on, on there, don't you? You know, some of them, you know, the ones particularly perhaps in the middle of the um, rainforest in Australia or somewhere. And uh, they do these, do these things that, so they can earn themselves food, don't they? If you've ever watched it or read about it or whatever. And these celebrities, that they do things that they never ever dreamt of, you know. Put their hand in when there's spiders. And they, and they say afterwards, well, you never got me to do that. You know, it's a bit of a surprise that I had the ability to do that. I had the courage to, to put my hand in somewhere where I wouldn't normally if you'd have told me what was in there. Following Jesus is an adventure. And we, we don't know what, what surprises are around the corner. And as those first disciples, they followed Jesus for those three years or so. They didn't really know what was going to happen. And yet they saw all these wonders and miracles performed before them. You now starting with the water into wine at that wonderful wedding. You can think of that wedding, the band of marriage and all that this morning. And it was a surprise to them. And then Jesus healed people. And you can read all about these things in the Gospels. The adventure that the disciples were, were on was a big adventure with surprises. To all the things that they've seen and heard. And then it comes to this Easter day and all those things that Jesus had been saying were now coming true. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. I don't know about you, but for me it fills me with joy and excitement. What lies around the corner? You know, I've said before in church, if you'd have said to me that uh, one day you'd come back to your roots, you'd be the vicar of um, London, Great Barford, Roxton and Thamesford, and even now raised, as some people say, raised to the elevated status of rural dean. <laughs> <coughs> I'd have never have believed that. And it's where my journey with Jesus Christ has taken me. 20, 30 years ago, I would have laughed at you and said, no chance of that. This is where I am. God's adventure is full of surprises. We don't know what's around the corner. And those surprises start today. As we celebrate the Easter story, as we think about Jesus risen from the dead, he's alive forevermore. I hope as we go through this Easter day, as we think about these things, and in the days that lie ahead, we would want to put our trust in Him, to start that adventure, that life with Him alongside us. He doesn't say, well, you know, nothing bad will happen to you, or anything like that. Jesus is alongside us, whatever we face in life. He's there. He's with us. To guide us and to help us through all those things that we face on life's journey. I pray that you will put your trust in him. Now we went up and blessed the Easter Garden a few minutes ago, didn't we? We blessed the Easter Garden and we went together. Such Wonderful thing, isn't it, to see the, see the innocence of children to take on board what Jesus has done for us today. Jesus died for each other and every one of us, that our sins might be forgiven. And he's risen again for every one of us, that we might have a good relationship with him. Believe and trust in him, the one who lives forevermore. Amen. <coughs> I invite you now to stand as we say the creed together, as we affirm our faith in God the Holy Trinity. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only 
Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have our mind. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of our life. Because they seek from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit as we come to our prayers of intercession. Father, 
we lose all hope. Thank you for your protection and your promise we have in your word. Nothing can separate us from your love and the victory achieved by Jesus on the cross. He is our hope and present help in trouble. We have no need to fear. You will never leave nor forsake those who put their trust in you. Thank you, Lord. You make all things new. We pray for those we know who are sick at home or in hospital. May your healing power be with them. We pray for all those looking after the sick and thank you for your tender loving care to those who are feeling very low at this time. We pray also for those who have recently departed this life. Be with those who are mourning them and give them your comfort. Thank you, Lord. You, you make all things new. Dear Lord, you love this world so much that you gave your one and only Son that we might be called children too. Help us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Day every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in that mighty grace and tell your good news to the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. you to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of God's peace, either by waving or shaking of hands, whatever you feel comfortable doing with those around you. Peace of the Lord. So I'm going to sing our next hymn, number 45. At the Lamb's highest feast we sing, praise to our victorious King. Number 45.
Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. I'm going to use Eucharistic Prayer B, which you'll find on page 7 of the service of page 7. After the opening responses, there are some different words for this season of Easter. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed our right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of his Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. Please be seated. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night as he was betrayed, took bread and gave me thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave me thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. We turn to page 11 of our service book. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who this bread to share in the body of Christ. Today we are one body because we all 
share in our bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear up our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeem our world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his suffering. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I am to say the word, and I shall be healed. distribution of Holy Communion. Our tradition at the moment is that we dip the wafer into the wine, which you are quite welcome to receive. If you'd like the wafer only, not dipped in the wine, then please bring your service book with you as you come to the altar. I know that you're just there for the wafer on its own. Or alternatively, you can come forward for a blessing. Please come forward to the altar, keep your hands by your side. I know you are there for a blessing.
for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of a cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our hand. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Almighty Thank God, God. We thank, thank you for being us the body and blood of your, of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live and love your praise and glory. Amen. Please would you stand for the blessing and dismissal before we sing our final. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So we sing our final hymn, number 25 in the Green Hymn book. Alleluia, Alleluia, past the heaven and voices raised, number 25.